19th of May, ACB is happening in Nottingham. And Tim, you are signed up to ACB. Uh, I want to find out what happened because obviously you were fighting previously on, uh, is it GP UK? Was it? Oh no, I'm going to get the promotion name wrong there, aren't I? But you're fighting uh, there. Golden. So what was it called? It was called Golden Ticket. Golden oh, Ticket, ah, there you go. You were there and now you're ACB. What happened with this transition? Um, well, I, I, I only, uh, I wasn't signed exclusively to anyone, so I'm kind of free agent. Um, uh, at the minute, I'm signing a fight at a time. And um, ACB approached me uh, kind of about eight weeks before Nottingham mm. and said that they'd, they could offer me a fight, but I was, uh, I'd, already, I'd already signed to fight Anthony Dizzy, uh, to defend my belt against Anthony Dizzy on uh, Golden Ticket. So I made them aware of this and I says, you know, I've got commitments there, I'm not the kind of person, to, you know, because obviously ACB perhaps higher um, calibre, well, it is a higher calibre show than Golden mm. Ticket, but, you know, if I've promised to fight someone, uh, yeah. uh, then that's it, unless I'm, I physically can't, then I'm fighting them. But, um, yeah, so uh, I told them the situation, I says, it's four weeks after, I says, if, if I'm, ha I'd happily fight on or stay fit as long as I'm not injured, and they were like, they were, they were seriously keen. So they'd actually sent me the contract before uh, I'd even fought Anthony Dizzy, but the, um, you know, I, I wasn't stupid. I didn't sign it because it, I could have broke my hand or yeah. a anything yeah. could have happened in that fight. So yeah, but uh, I was just super focused on Anthony Dizzy. So I kind of put that to one side got that job done uh, and then the next day I signed the contract and sent it back because I'm fresh, got no injuries, um, yeah, ready to go. So, uh, like I say, I, I signed one fight at a time and we'll see where I'm going with that though. Well, I was going to say, like with ACB, they've got a nice deep roster of fighters. So, if you were to sign a multi-fight deal, you, you, you know they've put on shows regularly. So you can get a regular fight. Is that the reason for that one fight deal that you, you're doing at the moment? To try and keep it regular so you can keep, so you can go from maybe just show to show, so to speak, so you can keep fighting, not just having to sit and wait until they give you something? Yeah, it's part of the reason. Um, they offered me the, the one fight deal as well. I think being Nottingham, being quite local, it's like an hour's drive from me. Yeah. Uh, that Now I'm a good ticket seller, so uh, that... Uh, that was always uh, Carl, the matchmaker. He, you know, he knows me and he knows what we're about. So, yeah, I think that that was always the case with that particular card. If ACB were to offer a, a multiple uh, fight deal, then I would definitely be interested. You know, if the money was right, because, like you say, they have got um, a lot of talent in the roster. So, um, but yeah, like. Uh, um, every, the goal's the same. It has been the same since I started getting serious with my MMA career. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm working towards the UFC, and then I'm working my way up the UFC ladder. So, um, but for now, like I, I did want to fight regular. I, I had uh, some personal stuff going on in my life uh, that meant that I couldn't fight for nearly ten months. So I feel like this year I'm kind of catching up. And yeah. When I, when I beat this Russian next Saturday, that's three fights in four months, and that's the most active I've ever been in my life. So. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a that's a tough camp there, one after another, sort of speak, just going straight back into it. And imagine yeah. um, with you, you said this fight you got coming up with the Russian Alibek uh, Akachev that you're fighting. He got he's he's a guy who does free round decisions. He's I say he's like the kind of opposite to you because I'll be honest, him you're a guy that likes to finish fights. You know you're you're a guy that's an entertaining fighter. You're striking your movement. You like to bring it, you know, you are one of those guys, you know, you're on your shield or leaving your shield, you know, that's what you are. You're, you're one of those warrior guys that go in there and put on a great performance. This guy, like you say, he's, he, I want to say a grinder, but at the same time, he is a deadly guy. He, he is dangerous the whole time. Uh, what have you looked at this particular fight camp for him? Like, is there anything you've kind of thrown inside to maybe just get a bit of an advantage? Um, yeah, yeah I'm, I kind of agree with what you're saying, but I do, I do think he's a striker more than a grinder. I, th I just don't think he's got um, the right skills or he's perhaps not got the experience yet to finish the fight and know when to throw certain techniques. He's quite wild. Mm. Um, he, he, I think he's going to make for a really entertaining fight. And I always preach like that I'm always in fighting. Like, like you say, because my style's exciting and I'm always looking, I'm always looking for finish. You know, I'm not not a play it safe kind of guy, lay and pray, you know, um, but like, 
for for this guy in particular, I, I've only had a sh- like I said uh, previous. I was so focused on Dizzy, who mm. who's a completely opposite fighter yeah. to this guy. Um, you know that I hadn't even looked at him. I hadn't watched any of his fights. So on the next day. Uh, I had a look at him and I thought, oh, okay, this is a different fight. So he likes to stand and trade. So um, I'm looking to capitalise on that. How long that lasts, I don't know, because mm. you know a lot of people think they can stand and trade, but they don't tend to last doing that, or they don't want to. They soon change the game plan when they realise how difficult I am to hit mm. uh, and work out. You know, so uh, I. I um, I've got some strategies in place, but I'm excited for... I mean, he's tough. He's very tough. He's he's not been finished. Um, uh, so, but that, that again, that doesn't phase me. He, you know, I've fought guys before that have not been finished and then finished them. So, uh, that doesn't bother me. He's very tough, though. I, I watched some of his fights and I was quite shocked that, you know, like either of the guys, uh, like himself or his opponent, had didn't go down with mm. some of the heavy, heavy shots that have been landed. He, he's very fast with some of his spinning hook kicks. Some of the shots, you know, you know when you can hear the shots connect, yeah. big slapping noises. I'm thinking, Jesus, man, he's got like a coconut head or something. Because, uh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but you know, some people. I mean, he, he, you know, with all due respect, he come, he, he lives in a tough country. They mm. they have a tough lifestyle over there. He, he, he works hard, no doubt, uh, every day. Uh, he, they're very tough people, you know, so I don't expect to walk in there by any means and just clip him and knock him out. But, um, yeah, so the game plan is to set a nice, fast, high pace, and if the opportunity arises to finish it, well, you know me, I'm, I'm yeah, going to Yeah, all over it, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's like a... He's almost like a Darren Elkins, just like, like say, a head like Coker, just can take just can take a good, good oh, yeah. crack, but he can keep going. But then again, I suppose one of them ones, it's... You know yourself because you've got to see that you just won't go. Or when you land a good shot, you know from your experience not to just go and empty the tank on him because he might just still be there at the end of it. And the last thing you want to do is gash your arms out, and you've got a guy that's still there afterwards, want to be dangerous and throw throw those kind of wild power shots at you. And um, one thing I wouldn't mind chatting about quickly is uh, you were scheduled previously to have Mr. Norman Park. Um, have a bout with you. I was quite intrigued with that all happening and going down. I saw it on the social media. I was quite, I was like, oh, that just came out the blue. Um, and obviously it fell through. Is that something that, in, if you could, if it could make it happen, is that sort of fight still that intrigues you? I know, you know, it's, I'm not saying necessarily your heart was set on it, but is that a fight though for you that might be, that's a good feather in my cap? Um, yeah, I mean, Norman's uh, he's got a lot of hype behind him. He's a very he's a vet, isn't he? Let's face it, he's a UFC vet. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, like I say, like last year I had like ten months off nearly, and I come back into kind of got back into training. I was like, right, I want to fight. I need to fight now. Uh, get me a fight. I need a high caliber fight to kind of boost me back on the scene because because I've having a bit of time off. Yeah. And um, Dan Cassell, the promoter, who's also my training partner, one of my training partners, he um, at Golden Ticket, he he says, "What about if I can get Norman Park for you?" And I kind of went, I laughed and said, "Fuck <laughs> off!" Yeah. Like, and he was like, "No, no, seriously." I was like, "Mate, if you can get Norman Park, I'll fight him for free. Like, just get him. You know, <laughs> that's a big fight." And um, well, they spoke to Norman. I think he just fought uh, Matthias Gamrot, and he, he yeah. broke his form and stuff. And he was like, he took the fight with a broken thumb and was like because it was February this was uh, November this was happening or October oh, so, so he had loads of, so he had surgery he had surgery in November and he signed the contract they had a contract written up um, and I won't go into too much details as the business agreement because uh, no doubt in the future there'll be a statement released but there was a bit of uh, bad business went on let's leave it at that but uh, yeah moving forward uh, uh, the fight was on I was training extremely hard I trained all through Christmas I, I trained Christmas day you know I was serious man like for me I knew that beating Norman just made me whew, sends me flying yeah, yeah. so I, I was not only going to beat him I was going to finish him and I felt the best I've ever felt like uh, I have done since I've kind of come back you know on the scene mm-hmm. and um, yeah and then Jesus what was it no uh, January he pulls out he pulls out. He says, "My thumb, my thumb. I've got a poorly thumb, like." Right? But you know, uh, he he'd been kind of bullshitting, saying that he was training, he was back hitting pads and everything. And the truth was, he wasn't. Mm. 
Mm. And in some respect, I understand why he didn't tell Dan Cassell the truth because he's my training partner. He obviously was concerned that Dan was going to tell me. Yeah. Um, but you know, if he wasn't going to be ready, don't take the fight in my eyes. But uh, so I kind of just that was it. I just washed my hands. I mean, the, he's a bit annoying to be honest. He, he he trolls me on Twitter and stuff, and it, it, it was doing my head in. So I was just like, whatever, just moved on. Like kind of left that there. There's no yeah. point. Uh, mithering over it is there it's done now so I moved on luckily we got uh, which happened to, in my opinion was a harder fight uh, Amin Ayub a young hungry French lad who was very very tough and I had a, I got a replacement uh, on kind of four weeks notice I think it was so um, and we had a great scrap and yeah and that was it kind of moved on um, I think he's been in touch with Dan since uh, he's interested he wanted to see if he could fight me on a Brave is it or something in yeah Bel Brave's in Belfast yeah he's been talking about the obviously, Brave card yeah yeah but obviously I already um, I already had uh, a fight schedule so yeah. I mean I would I fight him? Yeah, happily, any day like of the week kind of thing. But am I looking to? No, I'm not going to chase him. It, I don't really like the black, so I mean, I'm not going to like have that back and forth arguing with him, calling him out. I, no. I mean, I don't, I'm respectful of him. He's a great mm. fighter, and it would be my toughest fight by far. Mm. But um, you know, I think he for him he needs to have that. Oh, that back and forth bullshit that like kind of all the time and I'm not like that you know I just yeah. like to just fight sign a contract train just, yeah, and fight. fight shake hands after move on you know so but um, yeah in my opinion once I've finished this Russian by the end of the year I, I'm kind of I've moved past him now do you know mm -hmm. what I mean I, yeah. I want some higher ranked I want I want the the UFC guys like I, mm. I, you know that's where I see myself by the end of the year 15 and 3 Something good about the ACB, uh, if, I, if, I, if you were to stick around with them, is they have ex-UFC vets on their promotion. You know, they sign guys like that on there. So if you, get, if you were to sign, uh, just go in, get the win, and then sign with them, you might get the opportunity then to take on the, uh, a former UFC vet. And that's always the kind of... They're like markers for fighters to, to go in, aren't they? You know, it's like there's a lot of guys in the past when they beat former UFC fighters, it's their kind of way in it's like right well i've beaten what you've got what you've had i could beat that kind of level get me in there and let me see what i can do so that, that's a, that's a kind of another opportunity that acb can offer yeah and no, I, I agree and you know the more like i, I fought michael labu who's acb vet on yeah. cages all kind of big names like that i can get on my uh you know like i've said this for years though i have to beat the best in europe and the best names that unsigned to prove that I belong in with the signed lot you know and I think my last fight Dizzy speaks volumes with you know anyone who knows the sport knows kind of where Dizzy was at and what he's done and achieved and I knocked him out in round two you know so it's like I'm, I'm kind of showing there where I belong uh, and I, I plan on keep doing so and yeah I, I think I saw the, the sign Martin held and I, I was quite surprised yeah. like he, uh, he's a big uh, he, I think he only lost one in the UFC I don't know what happened whether he, he chose to leave but yeah like any names like that or I, I'm not sure I'm not up to date with who's the champion on, on ACB and stuff like that in the lightweight division but yeah I mean I'm bring them on you know I'll beat this guy and then I'll beat whoever they put in front of me to well, prove that's where what I mean. like you said Marcin now they, they keep bringing these names in and it's it's good for you as a fighter to see that outside of the UFC there's the guys big names are getting signed to promotions like that and like you say ACB go all around the world it seems at the moment now they, they've been to Australia Brazil they're going everywhere so it's it's almost like a mini UFC so to speak going around globally with all these yeah. good names um, well, when, I, when I tell people who are not in the know of the sport, and when I tell mm. them and I describe ACB, I kind of describe it as like a, a baby UFC to yeah. grow in. See, they are a big, they are doing wonders, you yes. know, they're bringing big names, they're putting on big shows, and they're paying well, and yeah. like, they're paying fighters what they deserve to be paid, so it's uh, it's good, and they promote the show really well, so, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm excited to fight on there. They take eight. They take I'm seat. hunting for that bonus for it like that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say they've got the commentators, they've got the referees, the judges, and the kind of just bonuses that they do. They're, 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 it's great because it's not just allocated to one person. They've got they've got like opportunities for loads of guys to get bonuses. So it's not like you have like your standard one or, one or two bonuses. Like there's there's opportunities for more than one guy on the card or girl on the card to get a, 
to get it, which I think is great as well. You know, it's it's just one of those things that, like you say, fighters deserve to get paid a bit more than they do. We, we you know that, I know that. I was paid pennies on uh, when I'm, I've been competing, so and getting punched in the face is not worth it. <laughs> no, I mean, so, it, it, it mate, it, it's uh, it's a struggle, man. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's it's you know, so many people kind of get nearly there and then they fade out and stuff, or they make it. They don't quite do, you know. They're not perhaps quite ready when they get there, mm. uh, you know. Or they do get there, they do all right in there, and then they blow all the money, and you know they don't plan for the future and stuff. Yeah. It's a really, really tough sport to make. You know, if I'd compare myself on the, if you compared it to football, I'd say like you know, good championship level team in football. I wish yeah. I was on the money they were on. You know, five grand a week or ten grand a week. <laughs> you know, look if I made that, you know, a fight. So yeah. let alone a week, you know. So. Um, <laughs> Hopefully one day uh, the sport will keep evolving and it will catch up. You know, I mean, never going to be as good as footballers, but it'll, it's yeah. getting better. Yeah. So um, yeah, man. Good yeah, sport. like these promotions, like, like you say, AC being all the, the kind of shows help help do that. Uh, but uh, look, to, I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get some rest. You need to prep, get ready for this uh, final week. Uh, before I let you go, buddy, give me your sponsors because they are always the ones that help fighters free fight camps uh, and in general, really. Yeah, uh, well, I'd like to thank Booster. They're my day one sponsor. They help me with all my clothing and, uh, sorry, not clothing, all my gear that I use, the best gloves in the business. Um, I'd like to thank my gym, UTC staffs, and John Roberts, my head coach. Um, also, Neil Simpkins at uh, Gracie Baja, WS1, sent my Jiu Jitsu through the roof these last couple of years. You know, not many people know about that yet because I like to keep it standing, but. Uh, <laughs> um, there's loads the Chase Health Club all the little sponsors that help me out just with uh, freebies and stuff uh, it really all helps all that so you have active therapy my physio my performance coach yeah just all the guys that work with me and they've, I, I have a circle now they all know who they are and you know I've worked with them through from day one and, and, and just a little shout out to my family my mum and dad and the support they give me and stuff so yeah. and all my training partners all my fans everyone who watches me and supports me and encourages me you know it all it all means the world to me so it's, it all makes a difference doesn't it you see it helps keep that train going you know it's it's all little things like that makes a big di makes it's only small but it makes a big difference to the person i.e. you uh, the fighter themselves uh, look mate have a great experience of ACB uh, I look forward to hearing how it goes man how it's all how it's run back, door, back, door, back backstage and stuff like that as well you know I hope everything's great for you I hope you have a great experience I'll be tuning in I can't make it to that card because ACB was silly and they did it the week before the UFC card in Liverpool and I had already yeah. booked to go to the Liverpool one so I couldn't yeah. afford mate I can't afford to do two cards at once because I'm not in England you see I'm on the Isle of Man so sadly I yeah. couldn't get over it so I'm going to be watching the card so yeah. I'll watch it live mate so I'll be tuning Sunlight. in and uh, I look forward to watching another soon, entertaining man. great performance mate so enjoy yourself nice. bro